Good morning, everybody. <laughs> If you don't already know, no. I'm the husband. My name is Moni. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm here with my now husband. Yay. <laughs> If you don't know me, my name is Judy from Just Judy Lemon. I am here today with a very exciting video that has been in the works. <laughs> for a while and it's to talk about our wedding <laughs> yay <laughs> so if you don't know who this lovely man is and Penny, <laughs> this is my now husband we have been together for eight years Uh, I don't even remember anymore. I think it's eight years. Coming yes. up on eight years. We're coming up on eight years of being together. Married for two months. We have been officially married for two months. <laughs> we wanted to talk to you guys about our wedding. We wanted to talk about how we had our wedding for less than $20,000. Which, for some people, that might feel high. But I think, just in general, to have a wedding... In Southern California that's generally the price you're gonna look at um, sadly probably more probably more we tried to have it as low cost as possible with still having a lot of the factors and elements that we knew we wanted in our day um, so we thought it'd be a good idea to sit here and talk to you guys about how it went what we did to plan and just how we executed our wedding this past January. So we got married this past January in 2024 in San Diego, where we currently reside. Um, we spent about $10,000 of our own money, and, and we want to tell you basically how we pulled that off. Considering how expensive weddings are, only spending 10k of our own money is actually pretty good. Yeah, and I think the important thing to note is that we initially went in with the budget of 10k. And so one of the first things that we're going to talk about is the priorities that we listed for our wedding. Uh, what type of vibe we wanted, what was important to us. It was just a top 10 list of priorities that we had individually. And then we brought them together and we identified these are the things that we absolutely want. Um, some things that we can compromise on, some things that we could do without. Um, and that really helped us set our budget. And anything extra that we were going to have came in the way of gifts from any type of family members that we had. We did have support from our family members. We do want to mention that as well. Yeah. So this definitely wasn't something we went into alone. We were fully expecting to go into it alone because both of us come from low income households. And so we were not expecting a whole lot of family contributions. So anything extra was going to just be a plus. I was trying to do my uh, Gen Z heart for the family members that oh, helped out. Yeah. Thank you, family members. Really, Thank you, family members. I'm just going to go back to the tried and true millennial heart. <laughs> It's easier to do the Gen Z when you have nails. And now I have nubs. Um, but yeah, just as Moni was mentioning... Our first step was writing out our priorities. So this was something that a, a follower of mine on Instagram suggested that we do. Um, so we separately created top 10 things we wanted in our wedding. Like what was important to us? It was important that it was intimate. It was important that we looked good, um, felt good the day of. It was important to have certain people there at the wedding that, and then What we did after we developed our own list is we sat down together and went through basically our top 10 and kind of narrowed it down like, okay, what are like top three things that we really want to happen at our wedding? So that list basically started to guide us into our planning process, which was really helpful. That did lead us into our next step and probably the biggest and most important step We made our list. List. And then we were like, okay, what should we do? And Moni originally was like, I only want to spend like $5,000 of our own money. And I was like, all right, then we're eloping. That. that is what you said. <laughs> 
And then I said, we're eloping then. We're having, we're just gonna, it's just gonna be us two. Maybe like our best friends, maybe our parents and that's it. Like that, it's like a 10 people gathering if we're only gonna spend $5,000 on this because realistically that's probably would have, that's how far that money would take us. Um, and then, you know, Moni thought about it and was like, no, no, no. Like he really wanted his entire family there and you got, a big family and my entire family probably took up like nearly half of our guest list <laughs> yes <laughs> he's cambodian and so he has a nice big family that he wanted to attend and generous family <laughs> <laughs> this is true <laughs> so it will it helped out a lot in the end <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> so basically after we, you know, Moni came to that realization of like realistically for him to have his whole family there, we did have to increase the budget. And so Moni is a wizard of some kind with budgeting, spreadsheets, things like that. And you basically started to create our little budget spreadsheet where we were able to really figure out like where yeah. Us in the, we spend this money. Us in the biz, you know, <laughs> we call it forecasting. You know, <laughs> in higher ed, you have to forecast so much money. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I, I basically just figured out what our budget and the cost would be. And I, between the two of us, I determined a fixed amount that we will both need to save every month to mm -hmm. where we would put this money into a, importantly, put this money into a high yield saving account so it could make a little bit of money while it's sitting in there and so that and by the time things needed to be paid off then we would be able to pull from that savings account um, something that helped us before that too is that we looked into getting a no interest credit card mm -hmm. so we did get a no interest credit card and there was no interest for 15 months so for us that was right within when we were engaged to when our wedding would be and so we were able to put almost everything on that credit card and not have to worry about paying any interest or extra fees or anything like that until much, much later on. And so that was really helpful for us and mm -hmm. definitely a really good tip and thing to look into. If you're planning to make a lot of purchases and don't have the money right away, then just put it on, put it on that credit card and not mm -hmm. really have to worry about it until we get it. But we saved up for nearly a year and that's how we ended up saving the 10K that we mentioned ourselves. That was just from the money that we were saving from our individual jobs um, each month mm -hmm. um, and that went into the account and as needed we would pull money from the account when Judy needed to pay for her makeup or I needed to pay for my or pay for our wedding bands or our photographer mm -hmm. and things like that we would always pull money from that account after we figured out the budget, it was time to figure out our venue. And that was, that in itself was a really big task because, you know, venues are limited to your locality. And so some places will just have a ton of different types of venues. Um, and there's a lot of different spaces that you can look into. There's your traditional things, like if you are religious, you can have in a church or mm -hmm. in a monastery or a mosque or wherever you feel like you're comfortable with. Um, people do it in parks, people do it at wineries and all these different types of venues um, but you just really have to kind of scour what's available in your area and say okay this is what's going to work for me, this is what's going to work for our budget. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we forgot to mention earlier was that we also didn't want to do a whole lot of work Yeah. <laughs> and so we also chose a venue that was going to make it very easy for us to do things Yeah. and we so the venue that we chose ended up having a lot of our hit points or points that we wanted, which was the intimacy, the decor, the indoor outdoor space that we both really wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and they so happened to also have a kitchen and drinks already there. So we didn't have to go through an outside vendor for mm -hmm. any food or drinks. Mm -hmm. And that was very important to us too. Yeah, we didn't want to have to deal with communicating with this vendor and this vendor and then bringing them all together at the venue to coordinate with the coordinator. So that was a really nice aspect of our venue, which was called Fruit Craft. Um, it is a local venue, like Mo Moni was saying here in San Diego, uh, where they had everything we needed. And that included a coordinator as well, a DJ. So they all have like their own little inner network, basically, of vendors that they work with and trust. 
and know how to communicate with. And what's nice is a lot of those vendors do weddings there repetitively, so they know the drill, they know what to do. So it was very seamless the day of. Like I didn't, I didn't even blink. <laughs> like at like, oh no, something could be wrong. Like at nothing at all. <laughs> like that was never a worry. Yeah, and that's the idea, right? Because it's it's our day, mm -hmm. and so we don't. We don't need to worry about the details. We don't need to worry about this vendor's late or this vendor's not coming or anything like that. It was all handled in-house mm -hmm. um, and it was really great. And so that was very important. And it was a, a truly beautiful venue as well because it had both elements of like an indoor reception area and then it had the outdoor ceremony area. So we were able to have like that natural light, some really nice like beautiful barn doors as our backdrop for the ceremony, a lot of greenery, which was really nice. People basically said it looked like our house, yeah. but in there, because <laughs> yeah, it's like very much our style, lots of plants, um, you know, dark woods and um, kind of that like industrial feel as well. I don't think we have like an industrial feel in our home, but we definitely have like a lot of wood tones and plants. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was like natural, industrial, and modern all at the same time, just because of the way that they've designed the space, mm -hmm. um, and it kind of it, it kind of matches our our vibe and our our house too, because that's just the the things that we naturally gravitate towards. And then thankfully what they also had was the food in-house and we were able to try their food at one of their open house events. So they have open house events throughout the year where we were able to attend the first time and ask all the questions that we had about the venue and try their food and their drinks as well. So that was really nice. And then we also had an opportunity to do an additional food tasting as part of our uh, booking with them to see if there was any other food that we wanted to have at the wedding instead of a taco bar Which is what they had sampling at the open house Yeah, we chose the taco bar because it was it was honestly yeah. the best option. Uh, it tasted great um, But all of the food there was great, um, but that is what we liked <laughs> Yeah, and then I think all we had to do with the venue after we decided that we were going to move forward with it um, was basically meet a certain minimum amount of food and drink. I think it was $4,000 minimum amount of food and drink with them. I think initially our like first quote was like 6000 I want to say it was closer to $6,000. Um, but then that kind of leads into what we were willing to pay for ourselves mm -hmm. and then things that were gifted to us were additional. Right. So uh, my sister gifted us the DJ and so she generously gave us some money so that we can pay for the DJ. Um, our other brother gave us money so that we can pay for all those floral arrangements mm -hmm. um, and things like that. And so things that were extra for us that were lower on our priority list were offered as gifts from our mm -hmm. family members and our friends. Yeah, and we still stayed within that 10K of like what would have been for us. Like I think if we wouldn't have gotten those gifts from people, we probably would have just, I think we were going to do like only like a bouquet and boutonniere for the florals, mm -hmm. like a la carte options basically from like a local uh, florist shop here in San Diego, just to keep the cost low. But since we were generously given those gifts, we were able to get kind of some nicer stuff. Right. <laughs> um, and I think even originally we were going to just have like a Spotify playlist play because that was also an option yeah. with the venue. Like they were very fine with that. Like just plug in your phone. Yeah. Um, and you know, Spotify like mixes your songs. Like you, that's a setting on it too. So it doesn't necessarily have to play the whole song. Um, so that was going to be something we we're going to look into or like see if a friend as a guest could be in charge of it. I don't know, things like that. But in the end, we did end up having those two kind of more luxury pieces to our <laughs> wedding day. <laughs> yeah. And this is all happening over like the span of a year, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so these things, these conversations didn't always happen right away. And so... For the majority of the time, we were fully expecting to just have that 10K that, of our own money mm -hmm. and saying, yeah, they were, they were going to do it this way. Um, but then time passes by and our family members say like, yeah, we're going to want we want to do this for you um, as a congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, Perks of being the youngest in the family, too. So 
it helps out. Everyone wants to take care of us. And I think that is what was nice about the venue too, is that because they had everything in house that whenever that there was that change, we, they were just like, all right, let's call our florist up. Don't worry. Or like, okay, don't worry. Like here's your DJ. And it wasn't like this like search of, you know, having to find someone like, Hey, are you available on this day? We were pretty on top of things like time management wise. Like there was never anything that was like, Oh no, like we're not going to get it in time or anything like that. It, it, it was just helpful for the venue to have, yeah. you know, those people already coordinated with them. Um, and honestly, I think for us, how much we spent at the venue and everything we got, it was a really solid deal because I think when we were doing our research with other venues in San Diego, you're, you're paying about like five to $10,000 just for a venue. So you're just paying like no for vendors, venue. no food, Nothing else. no decor, just, 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 just the space, just the room. They might, they might even have a restroom fee. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. a, a dressing room fee. Probably yeah. there's all these hidden fees. That is for sure. That, that, that was everywhere. There were a couple of hidden fees with fruit craft, but they weren't super crazy. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you're not going to avoid them. In yeah, this economy. nowhere <laughs> in this economy. <laughs> yeah, so like for us, I think there was the additional cost uh, in the venue, like set up for your ceremony chairs. Uh, use of the ceremony space was like an extra charge on top of the food, and the coordination package as well was also an extra charge. And I don't remember exactly the dollar amount, but I will put it right here when I see our receipts. <laughs> Next was decorations. I have very little opinions on our decorations. Yeah? Uh, because I, I felt like the venue provided a lot of the natural decor for us. Mm -hmm. And so this was low on my priority list. And so <laughs> this is where I kind of yielded to Judy for her vision and what she kind of felt like she wanted. Uh, just because I, I honestly, you know, didn't have much of an opinion, as I said. I had an opinion on the cost, though. However, and that's we can, something we can talk about. Yeah, so, I mean, I think at the end of the day, you still want, you know, your wedding to look aesthetic. I mean, it, it like, it wasn't my dream wedding because it wasn't budgetless. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not rich. <laughs> so, I think because of that, like, it was a little bit tricky to like kind of figure it out we since we got married in january it was like well like what's the vibe like is it like a winter vibe is it like a a fall vibe like we live in san diego it will likely be sunny like i, I don't know so that was definitely like pretty tricky in terms of like decision making and we were just ready to do everything like as budget friendly as possible as we mentioned with like getting a la carte florals and stuff so when we did get the um dj and the florals gifted that was a little bit tricky like to figure out like color scheme and i definitely went into that thinking like maybe i made all the wrong choices <laughs> but you know when i saw my bouquet and stuff i was like oh okay no i made the right choice <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some things you kind of go into sight unseen. Yeah. Uh, because we didn't choose the DJ. Exactly. Right? We And we didn't choose our florist. Mm -mm. Uh, but we saw her work. And yeah. we were like, okay, we know we can work with this. Uh, mm -hmm. But those were those are some of the things that you're going to have to uh, maneuver and navigate <laughs> if you want to do it budget friendly. Um, that these are the things that you you have to work with. It might It may not be exactly what you want. Right. It might not be, you know a sea of flowers but you'll have some flowers like a river <laughs> creek <laughs> pond <laughs> puddle of flowers it was more like a puddle of flowers it was um, enough it was enough yeah it was definitely enough they were beautiful and then a lot of the other items that we needed like a seating chart we had like a little Polaroid guest book station. We just DIY'd those. Canva is, well, I already pay for Canva as part of my business. So I just used the Canva Pro to make our seating charts. 
we had like a big seating chart. We had individual seating charts because it was really long tables. So we wanted people to kind of see where they went in the long tables. And the, that Polaroid station instructions we found on Etsy. And they were like $4 yeah. for like downloads. And then all we did after that was just use Shutterfly to print everything. Um, and we framed things and literally frames we had in our home. <laughs> Or we bought, I think the only one we bought was the big seating chart. Like we needed a 16 by 20 frame for that one. But now that frame is being repurposed in our bathroom. Mm -hmm. Fun story, the seating chart is still in our bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but there will be something else to go in We there. will get new art. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we knew that we didn't really need or want much because at the end of the wedding, it did say like we were in the ones in charge of cleaning, like taking our own decorations home, which like makes sense. You know, you can't just like leave your stuff at a venue. And I think most places are like that, but yeah, that, that was just such a hassle to like have to do that. Like I remember like that was the last thing I wanted to do was just deal with decorations. And like Moni said, the venue was just so beautiful on its own that we didn't need much. Like yeah. we had the florals that we got and then like a few little decor elements like, and that was it. Yeah. And we were fortunate enough to also have uh, friends and, and people that and we were family. able to lean on to help mm -hmm. us with that. And you know, some of the decorations that we use uh, were things that were, were loaned to us from a friend. It took a village. You know, it to, did. To, to, to get all of this work done, it, it really definitely did. took a village. Like we did a lot of work, yes, but there's no way we could have done it without yeah. the help of our friends and our families. Yeah, our friends and families were honestly rock stars for helping us with everything that they did. And last is just photography, like makeup, hair, um, and like what we wore. These were definitely like the smaller details in the big picture of the whole planning process, but important ones. Yeah. So there, there were things that we considered individual costs too. Mm -hmm. Things that we're, we would share in our costs and things that we would pay for ourselves. And things that we paid for ourselves didn't go into the overall budget of our 10K. Yeah. So I paid for my own tux rental and other things regarding you know my day of attire. For me, it wasn't as much as Judy's, um, but she also paid for her own stuff. So her own makeup and hair, her dress, um, and things like that. She, those are costs that we agreed that we would split separately because mm -hmm. it wasn't going into the overall budget. It was more of individual wants that we would want. For me, I personally didn't want to be limited by our joint budget and what I wanted for what I would be wearing that day because I do know I like tend to like things that are probably more expensive. And honestly, my dress wasn't that expensive at the end of the day, but the alterations were pretty pricey and I think we did end up adding that to the joint budget. We did end up adding it to the joint budget at the very end mm -hmm. um, because we did end up recouping some money that we didn't expect to have. And honestly, the other really huge perks we had like for photography, we had our good friend Mariana who did our photography. <laughs> Shout out Mariana. Uh, follow her yes. on her IG. She is now. TikTok um, and, and YouTube as well. Yeah. And so fortunately she did give us a, a discounted price uh, because she knew us already. Yeah we've um, been working with her since like 2020. Um, there, there were some YOLO moments. Yeah for sure. In, in our wedding. We didn't, we didn't go exactly strictly on the 10k. We, we, st we stayed under 20k overall which was amazing. Um, but the money that we saved ourselves, we wanted an open bar, mm -hmm. we wanted some nice things uh, for us. And so, we're like, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah, I mean, because it's still your wedding. You still want to have a good time. You still, even though there is a budget and, you, you know, there's this looming realism over you, you still want to, I guess, you know, like have some element of like, yeah, like that was a splurge and you don't regret it because like you felt really good or, you mm -hmm. know, everyone had a lot of fun with like the open bar, things like that. So now let's get into some questions from people. Yeah. One last thing I want to address though. One very important thing that we both had to do was know how and when to say no to 
any type of request from our family members or friends or things that we needed to say no to each other for. We, we really had to learn how to do that and be okay with it because at the end of the day, it is our wedding, mm -hmm. it is our day. We are, the, we are the decision makers and we are the ones who are paying for the most of it too. Mm -hmm. And so we needed to make sure that what was happening on that day was going to be for us. Anyway. Questions. Questions from people. So, was there something that you were stressed about that ended up being very stress-free? The schedule. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were trying to figure out, like, how long is too long for the ceremony? Do we have enough time to eat? Do mm -hmm. our guests have enough time to gather and sit down, mm -hmm. cocktail hour? Um, a lot of that stuff was determined by the venue. Yeah. And because, we, because of the venue that we did, they were very experienced with, you know, their schedule. They knew what worked and yeah they we kind of just had to yield to them as far as like what the schedule goes and if we had questions and or concerns they happily addressed them but uh, we were able to kind of go with the flow essentially yeah and let them handle it it was really nice and honestly we didn't have to worry about the schedule at all no we literally were just like yeah, they would bring us, they, would, they brought us drinks. Yeah, they like I'd be like, oh, I need water and it'd just show up in my hand. Yeah. Like the coordinator was amazing. She was incredible, super sweet person. Mm -hmm. For me, it was the florals because as I mentioned, I worried that I had made the wrong decisions with like the colors and the color scheme and I wasn't sure if she like would get my vision and like what I wanted, but at the end of the day, she did a fantastic job and the florals looked amazing, especially the bouquet. I feel like the bouquet looked really beautiful. What were the hardest things to plan? The decor. Yeah. The separate decor that she wanted was the hardest to plan. Just because there were so many outside factors of like DIYing or paying if you don't want to DIY mm -hmm. or what is it going to look like? How do mm -hmm. you explain your vision to each other? Yeah, it was very, that was very stressful. We DIY'd a mirror. <laughs> it was this really beautiful mirror that we found on Facebook Marketplace. And we had seen someone use like a mirror. And I think it's also very popular. It's like a mirror that it says like your welcome sign and people can like take pictures like a mirror picture. Yeah, that was that was an adventure for sure. What is one thing you're glad you splurged on? A DJ and an open bar. I guess if I got to choose one. Definitely the open bar out of all of them. Oh. What are you happy about? That we, splurged. that we splurged on. Open bar was high on my priorities. Probably flowers. Yeah, you see, that was low on my priorities. I love flowers. Yeah, they I like flowers important. too, but they were... To the point where when I forgot it walking back down, I was like, absolutely not, give me my bouquet, <laughs> I'm getting a picture with this thing. Yeah, I remember that. It. One question we got was, where do you suggest to get wedding jewelry? Oh my, my boys out there, get a lab diamond. It looks amazing for the engagement ring. Mm -hmm. I personally went to a place online called Clean Origin. They were great. They have a lot of different designs. You can make your own custom rings. And for our wedding bands, we went to a place called Missouri. 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 And then for me, I got my earrings from Luna Norte. They actually do customized earrings for special events. So I did that with them and then the necklace I wore was from Anthropology, where I got my wedding dress. I chose that necklace because it's the one that the woman that was helping me try on the dress brought out for me and I was like, this is a great combination. I really like it. So because it was just a simple like dangly pearl, um, which I really liked. So that's pretty much everything. So in conclusion. Conclusion. <laughs> Planning a budget wedding is just knowing about like which costs are your priorities, which you can compromise on at the end of the day. Just make sure you have open communication, know what your priorities are uh, individually, know what your priority, priorities are as a couple, leverage as many different resources as you can. Mm -hmm. um, Network, you know, see who you have are in your circle that has things that you know they can offer one of my co-workers offered for tables and chairs for like a welcome party we did the day before the wedding so just really thinking outside the box get creative make smart choices with your money look into how you can save a few dollars on things instead of paying for things like that but the result was 
you know, absolutely worth it. Yeah. And we had a lovely day, a lovely experience at Fruit Craft in San Diego. I'm happy and sad that it's over because <laughs> it was a lot of work. A lot of work. Planning, planning that. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to be very organized and very timely in mm -hmm. our efforts. And we hope you enjoy the, the few clips that you got to see from our special day. Make sure to follow and subscribe here on YouTube if you want to see more videos from mainly me. He was a guest star today. Mainly her, but if you want to see me some more, let me know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll put her on my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Comment down below if you want to see more Moni on the channel. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel and if you want to follow along on what we're doing more on the day to day, follow me on socials like on Instagram and that's it. Yeah. Follow my beautiful wife. <laughs> bye bye.